there is a man in the deep we prefer to have the third man outside two men allowed inside the ring in the first 10 overs and it's a good approach very direct doesn't mind coming around the wicket to the left handers all going towards the target good load up towards the batsman and he's got an excellent wrist release generally the scene goes down very very stable which maximizes the chances of it swinging and generally his length's good isn't it gets full the slow delivery ends the over 74 for two it's a good little partnership like i mentioned earlier 56 59 came together when they were 18 for two Ricky Ponting has been a popular man because of the news channels in India. It's going to be a good contest though, seven match series. A lot of cricket to be played. Australia won the toss and decided to bat first. 30 no is gone, 74 for two. It's a very good partnership between Hayden and Michael Clark. Things were looking good for India at 18 for two, but Australia have come back strongly. So we've got some footy to the last over. Hayden leg glancing down to deep square leg through our Ganguly fields. Just wondering whether he's a bit proppy there. You just see his face goes down, whether that's a quarter or a hammy. Or oh, maybe, maybe a dodgy carry there we had for lunch it's got fine it'll be just a single if fun to turn the fielder they're just catching his hamstring like you mentioned yeah it looked pretty in innocent doesn't it and hamstrings are going around world cricket Shane Watson's at home well there you go and really high as well so he won't be able to stride out too comfortably always appeared to be a man and didn't really enjoy his fielding as much as most people and he'd be pretty happy just back the whole of India will be hoping that he's fit enough to bat because he gets a lot of runs and boundaries Well, the slip has gone out now. More defensive. Four in the ring on the offside, saving the single. Well, the man had slipped catching. Now he's looking to cut off the singles and create some kind of pressure. This one man, a third man. Looked to ball around the off stump just outside. of a single though it's a good fast outfield and Rahul Drab that displayed all this cricket here in Bangalore the local boy yeah Robin Singh might be happy the fielding coach from India and it's just bubbled hasn't it it's a bit higher than he thought it's one area which particularly in the 2020 competition in South Africa the Indian the younger Indian team was superb in the field Very expensive, with outstanding, like Damon Fleming mentioned, in the 2020 format. I don't know the problem is it's a good batting surface and two good batsmen, not to loving him to settle down. And a big problem for RP Singh is he's not getting the new ball. Zahir Khan, Sri Santh were preferred. They both swing the ball. But RP Singh, if we saw some of his dismissals in the 2020 World Cup, a lot of them were LBWs of right-hand batsmen coming back into him but as we talked about the good bowlers and there we see him very consistent there four for 13 versus South Africa and in the final three for 26 excellent stuff spelled away shafts the empire it's had a good game so far you know, one of the problems because 
of the left-right combination we're seeing, the bowlers unable to adjust. See, the Indian bowlers in the past do not bowl too well to the left-handers, but here they're struggling against the right-handed clock. And also, for the development of a younger bowler, we've well, got to learn to bowl when it's not swinging as well. You'll try and bowl a bit quicker, use your quicker bouncer, change your pace with slower balls. Good running. The four men inside the ring saving the singles. So he had to make sure that he got it to the man a bit off. And there's the mainstay of the attack. There's Batan, who got into some form in the 2020 World Cup. And good to see him back in the, the team. He's an exciting talent with bat and ball. Now the match in the World Cup final, first Pakistan. So he'll be on top of his confidence. Should get a single to end the over. 14 overs gone, 78 for two. That's going to be drinks. Continued his great form with the ball and a superb catch. Yuvraj Singh driving horizontally. We get a great shot here of it. Full stretch. Doesn't let it bounce out when he hits the ground. Here's the second one from Sri Sam. Good bowling. A lot of out swingers. That one seemed in. And Brad Hodge, the judge LBW. And the Australians were in real trouble early. seeing there just that narrow natural variation of out swingers and then the one that seems in so Australia for 18 for two at this stage well, Zaid Khan has been outstanding one for 25 Srishan one for 24 but too many wides Srishan out be a touch expensive seven and over at this stage just three bowlers used so far 18 for two at that stage Look like India will control, but then a good partnership. Hayden's on 34, 37, Clark on 22. It's the Future Cup. It's going to be a great series, seven match series. Just the two day nighters, Irfan Patan will be expected to come to the attack a little later. Free Shant will continue. Irfan Patan might be brought on after the 15th over. We'll see. As few overs as possible in the power plays. Again, changing his pace. 82 miles, the last delivery. Saw so a couple of slower deliveries in the last over from Sri Shant. Well, he's digging deep here. Quite hot out there, especially when the, the sun breaks through the clouds. Not as much swing now, so he can just run in and hit the deck and improve his consistently on that line. But it's quite a humid day, plenty of clouds, but when that sun comes through, we definitely felt it out there before the game. Bozem looking for the big shot. This is the breakthrough India needed. This partnership was looking threatening. 60 runs the partnership. Man, what a big wicket this is. Matthew Hayden, much to the joy of the crowd, has to go back. And Matty Hayden, he's not happy with himself. He's had a brain explosion. Sri Sant's consistency. Hitting metal. They miss you hit. And just see the sheer delight there from Sri Sant. The big wicket of Matthew Hayden on his way for 34. Australia 78 for three. Good average. And the important thing is this runs very quickly, so India have to get him very early in the innings. Two slips in good two as well, so good captaining here from MS Dhoni. Sri Sant still moving the ball. And every batsman's vulnerable early on in their innings. Just a little bit of swing. We're talking about Srishan bowling too many wides. He's bowled a couple of wicket taking deliveries. That's mattered a lot. Real poor shot from Matthew Hayden. Great bowling here. And this is the dismissal of Matthew Hayden. 
good length there from Sri Sant as well. Like Hayden couldn't hit with a vertical bat straight over his head. He had to go to mid wicket. And that says it all. Matthew Hayden closing the eyes, knows he's on his way. Good reward for Sri Sant, who's charged in, hasn't always got the ball in the right area. And he knows how to celebrate. A bit of extra bounce will get off to Mark Simons. We're talking about the three chance celebrating, you better be a little cautious, a bit of careful about where he runs when he's celebrating. And after getting rid of Matthew Hayden, he's running right down the pitch and is being cautioned by Steve Buckner. Still a slip in position against Michael Clark. Past the outside edge, thick part of the outside edge. Will be cut off. The running between the wickets is going to be extremely good. Two for Michael Clark. Let's take another look at the rest. Rishant was celebrating. Missed the wicket and look at that right in the middle of the pitch. Steve Buckner was quick to notice it. That wasn't his follow through, was it? It's a pretty long follow through. Has he aped his um, celebrations on yourself, Shiva? Were you much of a celebrator when you got a wicket? I thought you saw my match last night. I won, played 1985. Ramesh Fawad, the deep. They look for two. Fawad does well. Just a single. 82 for three. Second power play just concluded. It's still going at a good rate. 5.47. Just lost three wickets. That's the important part. Very much even Stevens at this stage. India will look at another wicket in the next five overs. It's the last of the power players. Would that be taken? 16 to 20. Second power play, they had three men outside the ring. So they have to have just two men inside the ring. Okay, about two men outside the ring. Suresh so Shastri will just confirm. Just looking at the field, we'll know. And looking at the field, there is a man at... Uh, you can see three men outside the ring. Against the right hand, Clark, four inside the ring on the offside. There's a man, a third man. The fine leg is coming up now. And the square leg is going to re remain behind. I think MS Dhoni was checking the rules with Steve Bucknell there. Knowing that there was only one power play where you can have three out. And then the other one you've got to revert back to just the two men out. Just running up to his bowler like it normally does, Mahindra Singh Dhoni. Just to calm his bowler down, RP Singh. Another injury. He spiked himself. It's the last five overs. The second power play. So just the one six from Matthew Hayden, the top edge of RP Singh. A couple of fours. I think India would be happy with only going for 26 in that power play. Also picking up the wicket of Matthew Hayden. The hesitation. Andrew Simons was taking a long start at the non strikers end. Good start to this over by RP Singh. First one getting through to Dhoni. Second one making Michael Clark hit to mid off. I think they've given him too many balls on his pads. So he's been able to whip through the leg side trying to get him to hit on the up to that offside field there may bring a wicket good shot great yielding Gambir the fielder his young generation of Indian cricketers are stunning in the fielding department and it creates pressure it 
creates doubt in the batsman's mind. Will we go? Will we go next time? So good one for stopping the ball. That would have been four if it had gone through. But a pick up and throw. Gambier just showing the athletic side of the Indian team. Robin Singh, the fielding coach, done a lot of work there. And it's probably the one area where they can improve. The wrist has slipped in position. He's got to be careful. There's good captaincy from Dhoni. They're tacking the new man in, Andrew Simons. He realises the importance of getting out. Andrew Simons very early in the innings. It's good carry in this pitch. Dhoni in the 16th over, taking it around, hit chest height. So just the one off the over. Been good stuff. Getting it on or outside off stump. That's gone through, and it's a quick outfield like it was mentioned earlier, and you get good value for your shots. Well, the power of Andrew Simons. You get too full, let him freeze hands through the offside. He's as good as anyone in the world, and India do not want to get this man off to a flyer. Head nice and still, nice and relaxed. He knows it's going all the way, so first boundary there to Simons. No swing for RP Singh, so he's got to adjust the length. Be just a single to win the over. It's 88 for three. Well, 270 will be a good score on this pitch. Just a couple of wickets can pull it back for the Indians. And wickets in hand, just coming out of the 2020. This is the possibility to get into 292. Good delivery, but we'll pick up the single, Simons. Yeah, and have a look at the pitch here. It's nice and hard. It almost looks like a gabber in Queensland. And then Brisbane, where we, Australia play normally the first test. It was relayed about 12 months ago and two New Zealand curators have really got the clay content up to 70 percent so that will induce the ball to get more bounce and more pace off the pitch Ooh. just got a little inside edge there another thing shiver is impressive covering of grass as well not so much for the spinners but for the quick bowlers That'll bind those cracks. They won't get any more bigger throughout this game. And they're the two New Zealand curators, Blair Christensen and Betty O'Connell. Blair Christensen, the guy on the left, is the head curator in Napier, New Zealand. Just lower delivery. Little miss next time by Reagan Dave Steve Butler. He's the man who matters. Thought about it for a long, hard while, and in the end, up went the finger. And it had him. There's the new man at the crease. Oh, a waste tie full toss. Will be one for the first time. It's also a no ball. That's the first warning from Buckner. Welcome to the crease, Brad Haddon. He would have been looking somewhere down two or three metres on the pitch to read the pitch of the ball off it. And here's the wicket of Andrew Simons. Leg spin out the back of the hand, just going on to hit leg stump. So good varieties again from Sri Sant. He mixes it up. Very, very unpredictable. And he's doing a great job for his country today. And apologising for that full toss there around the chest area. So he's had one warning. It was a change of pace that did the trick, and I thought it was the off break, slow one. And Andrew Simons was dismissed. I thought it was the off break. It was the leg break coming from behind the palm. Very well disguised. 
and deceived the batsman, hitting him low on the pad, and a good decision in the end from Buckner. It's actually not unlike Venkatesh Prasad, the bowling coach from India, used to bowl a slow ball out the back of the hand like that. That was very, very hard to pick. There's a different celebration each wicket. I think he choreographs all this. Another good delivery. Well, he's been all over the place at times, Shreeshan, but he's picked up three wickets. That's what his role is as a bowler. He's given the liberty to go flat out and bowl quick and try different variations and try and pick up some wickets. Three for 31 into his seventh over. Vektesh Prasad will be happy with the performance so far. And he'll be a lot happier if they bowled a lot fewer wides. But that's what Sri Sant provides. A lot of variation. Wide of the crease. Hits hard on the bat. At the end of a successful over for Sri Sant. Australia, 91 for four. Seventeen overs, 91 for four. They won the toss and decided to bat. Lost uh, Gilchrist and Hodge early. Then a good partnership between Hayden and Michael Clark. Hayden fell to a poor shot. Srishan being the pick of the bowlers. Three wickets for him. Andrew Simons also departing early. Slower delivery doing the trick for Srishan. A lot depends on the low order now after this partnership. Well, James hopes coming from a successful tour of Pakistan with Australia A. There's the Indian bowling figures and they're impressive. And that man, Sri Sam, three wickets to rip through the top order of the Australian team. And Michael Clark, Brad Haddon, both play for New South Wales. Close, close mates. And I'll have to dig deep here. Australia need a partnership, at least for the next 20 overs. I think some score around 300 will, will be enough. A change in bowling now, Zayev Khan to the attack. But Srishant has been warned for a high full toss. Maybe he was looking for the York at the first delivery against Brad Haddon. Yeah, that wouldn't, that's not a happy feeling for Brad Haddon to be in. He would have lost the ball totally. Steve Bucknor is straight onto it. One more and he's out of the game. But it's such a fine line between where you release for, say, a Yorker to a full toss. So we'll definitely give him the de benefit of the doubt. A well, difficult decision as a straight umpire. He depends a lot on his partner at the square leg. Shah Sri, the umpire. Let's take a now look at the square leg umpire. Does he give any kind of an indication? Well, straight away, yes, the square leg umpire indicates to the straight umpire. It's above the waist. First one, he'll be cautioned. Second one, can't bowl for the innings. Good bowling change from MS Dhoni as well. They're on top. He brings back his best fast bowler, Zahir Khan. And produce another wicket here. Well, you're really starting to get into that middle to late order of the Australian team. So James Hope's flown over because of the injuries to Shane Watson, who's done his hammy again. It's an opportunity. Katan warming up. Good decent speeds by all the bowlers, more so by Zaire Khan. Also being accurate with the kind of speeds that he's generated. Not a great deal of variety. I think he's matured really well. He spent some time out of the Indian team, went and took a heap of wickets for Worcestershire in the county cricket, and just seems to have really clicked and at the peak of his career. Someone who can spearhead this young Indian pace attack. No! So one of the other good things for India is that they can delay bringing in Patan till the 21st over, then they can spread out the field. Okay. Patan had a good outing in the 2020 World Cup, but here okay. against Australia, bowling with just two men outside the ring, could be a difficult situation for him. The things working for India at the moment, and Tony wants the man at mid on in to stop the single from Ish Power, the fielder there. Yeah. 
He looked for two. Wide open spaces. Michael Clark puts up two to end the over. It's 93 for four. Well, they say the capacity is 55,000 at this stadium and it must be very, very close to that today. And it's been amazing the last couple of days. The 2020 wing by the Indian cricket team has been unprecedented publicity here. Plenty of flags and cheering. The noise when MS Dhoni went out to toss the coin was amazing. So great to see this is going to be a fantastic series between these two great teams. So there's the Manhattan for the Australian team. Good middle period there when Matthew Hayden and Michael Clark were going. And then those wickets in the last couple of overs. So Australia need to rebuild. And to talk you through that, Aaron Lull and Barry Richards. Thanks, Damien. Well, India have really come in very strongly after that partnership between Hayden and Clark. It's wickets. It's all about wickets. And and they've got they've got some very valuable wickets thanks to Sri Shan. So he's been difficult to read. He's got a lot of variety. Bent on using it, sometimes wavered, hence those wides. But always very effective. Two slips for him. That's good captaincy because. Uh, Australia, well, are down. They would be defending at the moment, hoping to get themselves in. Desperate for a partnership. Dhoni going in for the kill. Yeah, good captaincy from Dhoni. He's attacking all the way. He's using his attacking bowler, the one that's getting the most movements. Confidence is up. Another wicket here, and he realises he puts uh, Australia right on the back foot. That's well bowled, getting him onto the front foot. He knows he's got two slips, wanting to get the ball to move towards there. Oh, well, there's a number. Probably on the wrong bloke. It should be on the, maybe uh, one of the other members, that bloke. <laughs> I'm sure Chris Broad's watching too. That he might want to be reminded of his son, Stuart Broad. Six sixes and one over for you, Raj. He should perhaps have number 36 on his back. It's not to be. The man who's doing all the damage for India, Sri Sad, he's number 36. Here he comes. I think that's something to do with the number because 36 seems to be working for the Indians. Maybe he's looking three for 36. He's got three for 31 at the moment. A few wides thrown in there, but he's certainly an aggressive young man. And he likes to attack. So does that man when he gets the bat in his hand. <laughs> Look at this strike rate. That's ridiculous. That's a Barry Bonds, I reckon. Plays baseball in America. 194. <laughs> Another slow one, but he's got this one away. It's true. There's no chasing that one down. Well adjusted there. Really had the measure of that, hadn't. Does it well though? He really does because the arm speed is this is exactly the same. So his arm comes over at the same speed, and the ball just pops out. And he's looking for the court and the covers, court and bolt. And he had to delay his shot. Brad hadn't did it well. Very fast outfield. Crowd really getting into it. And they've enjoyed themselves in India. I provided them with a lot of excitement. That's well ball. A single to end the over. It's 98 for four. With just the three bowlers used so far. Zahir Khan, one for 27. Three for 36 is a three shant. You called it, Barry. RP Singh bowled five. None for 34, but now a bowling change. Irfan Pathan lends a lot of balance to this Indian team. 
is back in this fold. He's got the ball in his hand and he's going to be bowling the last of the power play overs. Power play number three ends at 20. So he's got to have to bowl this over with the field restrictions on. So he's got a deep square leg and a deep third man. He had a more than decent 2020 World Cup, used all his experience and bagged the Man of the Match award in the final. That's a trophy he'll cherish all his life. the ability to bend it into the right handers now we just got to see whether he's going to use that he's also got 19 overs gone so he's got a pretty oldish ball I think he's broken his bat they're very soft these days you can see the amount of wood in that uh, bat sideways on there's almost uh, an advertising opportunity I huh? don't stir everybody up with that it's so thick down the edges these days it's obviously a favourite. Well, it's clear he's going to be bowling that length. He's going to allow the ball to do something in the air. Or if he can manage to do something in the air. And that's a good idea. 98 for four. If you can sneak another one out now because of you using the swing. And he's, he seems to have got his swing back. So he's inviting the drive. He's got mid-off and mid-on pretty straight and quite deep. Nice big bat that Haddon's got. So even when he's pushing hard which he does, the ball's going to travel quite quickly to the men at the outer edge of the circle. But he is providing the opportunity for swing. He's going to vary it, that's for sure. We saw a lot of variations there. There's Haddon with a few problems with that bat. He's asked for a tape. I wonder how many bats he would be carrying. If day one, he's gone through two. Oh, these days, I know Herschel gives for one, puts the number of bats that he's had just at the edge of his grip. He pulls the first part of his grip down and he writes in it. And I had a quick peek the other day, it was 45. Oh. Oh, what happened there? Those are the variations we're talking about. Dead spot. Absolutely. They're, they're going to be the odd dead spot on the wicket. And that surprised everybody. Just wonder how this is going to work on the mind. What place uh, you have that dead spot? Even though it's got quite a lot of grass on, there's uh, obviously a few of those little dead spots. Can't play those. Good bar play, that. Absolutely in the mark. Does he have an opportunity? No. That's good running. That brings up the 100 for Australia. It's 100 for four. They do uh, play a lot of cricket together, these two. They play for the same uh, state back in Australia, so they've got a good understanding with the running between the wickets. There was just a little bit of an opportunity there. The time not quite quick enough. Second 50 coming in 64 balls. That should end the power play. Three runs from this over. It's 101 for four. So that should uh, ease whatever nerves Irfan Patan had. He's bowled a pretty decent over. He's pretty much managed to put the ball where he wants to. And there is a little bit of variation off the wicket as well. There has been some in different bounds. That's the bat that's being fixed. That's a bit of a favourite. He's already got a three or four apes on it. But you're right about the thickness of the bat, Barry, and the fact that they're not so compressed so that you, you get a new bat on and you, you can walk into a match with it. They're no really banging in period or things like that that we used to have in our times. Just walk in with a bat and it's hitting off the surface beautifully. And going miles. Ramesh power. Mind you, this is quite a big ground. This this does give the spinners a, a little bit of an opportunity to throw the ball up, the odd one. They might disappear out the park, but uh, every now and again you can throw one up, trying to see the batsman in the fight, then you can use your outer fielders. Well, 
Well, the light's coming on. It's pretty bright out there at the moment. But as far as Ramesh Pawar is concerned, he flanks them a lot. In fact, uh, the deep positions sometimes are attacking positions as far as he's concerned. But he's gotten a slip. They don't have a long off, long on to begin with. Now he's going to flight and he's going to invite um, that shot. There's the fielder now moving back to long on. So they want them to play against the spin. He's only got three on the off. With a slip, that's the fourth. That's, that's the speed he bowls at, and it doesn't give you much pace to work with. I love it. He really does bowl a nice loop. He gets it above the eye line of the batsman. And you've got to generate all the pace off the bat. That's wonderful. If you don't have pace to work with, you can't really keep playing it in the gaps on the onside for singles. That's the problem. And he's got three men out deep. Deep backward square, deep mid-wicket and deep long on. So if you want to take him on, you've got to really hit it off the middle. Anything not off the middle, but the deep fielders are really in flight. That's the flatter, quicker one. There's a bit of an opportunity there for Adam, but it's just too early into Ramesh Pawar's spell. So he's also wary of the fact that they're four down. Beats him in the flight. That's the one that sort of dips on him, inviting him to use his feet. Not really reaching the pitch of it, hadn't. This is beautifully bowled. It really is. Lovely flight, just a bit of turn. Classical way to get somebody out. He's just a little unlucky. It's just dropping on him all the time. Unusual stance of the crease, uh, Brad Hatton. He's almost got his. Uh, that resting on his front leg. Tom Bradman used to have the, the bat uh, resting between the two feet. A lot of the uh, major players have it behind the right foot. He's got it uh, almost behind the left foot, the front foot, for a right-hander, which is highly unusual. That is very unusual. Oi! Oh, threw him, almost bowled him, but it's gone for runs. It's going to be four buys, but that's a magnificent overbold. 105 for four. Wallop. It's 105 for four. It may well have been five. The last ball of the last over just going over the middle stump. Exceedingly well bowled. He got in a maiden, but four runs conceded through buys. Beat everything. I'll tell you what, they are bowling so well in pairs. And that's the secret for India. This is just magnificently bowled. Look at that loop and the turn. It bounces on the seam, grips, beats his batsman. He beat him in the flight. He really did beat him in the flight. He was almost playing and feeling for it. It's magnificently bowled. And uh, that's when it's an unlucky game. He did everything right and didn't get a wicket. Just as I say, the, uh, the Indian bowlers have bowled well in pairs. It's been a key. Bit of indecision there, you'll have to hurry. Makes it with ease. But yes, you're right, both these bowlers are absolutely on the mark. That was an exceptional over by Ramesh Pawar. Should have had his wicket, but take a look at this. Look at that fielder coming in to intercept. That caused the indecision and may well have netted a wicket. That's good cricket. They're getting singles. That's what they need to do. Just keep changing the strike. Let not the pressure build. There are a few gaps now because the field restrictions have been relaxed and there are only five in the circle. Sri Shant, the hero for India. Till now, three wickets for 36. I just wonder if he's another six inches taller. Ideal fast bowler. Oh, that's 
it's got to be out. It's got to be very close. Nice run. Nice run. run out. Everything's happening here. <laughs> Sorry, Aaron. Including me. <laughs> <laughs> that had to be out. Surely it was so close. Could have been LBW. Almost got bowled and could have been run out. Oh, was that an inside edge? Did it carry? And then if this had hit, look where he was. Goodness me. How do you describe that? It's all happening there. I don't reckon he got an edge. Another one that came a little slow, slower than the batsman expected. The previous one was also a slow one because he released it with that off-spin kind of an action, an off-cutter. Take a look. Now, oh, how's that not out? Gee whiz, he's lucky. He's got away with it. And then he got away with it again. He better buy a lottery ticket tonight. He wants one. He's had to hurry. Oh, that would have been mighty close. It's 108 for four. You can't afford to even go to the toilet here. You're going to miss all the action. It's amazing. Two dismissals of uh, one delivery almost, then almost a run out. I think a little unlucky when he threw it. It just hit the edge of the pitch and bounced over the stumps. There we go, 108. 4.9 per over, not enough. Well, about the last 10 overs have been a great period for the Indians. They've come back, at least as far as that bar chart, bar chart shows. Not too many runs, they've got two wickets and pressure on Australia. Yeah, very good bowling as a pair. Patan rediscovered that in swing. Now they come, the lights are on, the sun's out, but they take a while to warm up, and that's why they've come on early. Well, that's the one that he bowls with the flatter trajectories. Oh, he's using all his variations. That's delivery number seven, which is dot for him. He's off to a terrific start. He's gone over the top, and he succeeded. That is beautifully played. Safest area on the park, over the bowler's head for four. He won't be disappointed, though. Michael Clark didn't get all of this. He had to wait just a little while, and that's... Uh, when you do them in flight a little bit. And he throws it up. He's prepared to uh, give it air. Well played in the end, though, by Clark. Well, that's what you've got to do to him. You've got to go to him. You've got to reach the pitch of the deliveries because he's not offering any pace. But you were right. That's exactly what he wants you to do as well. You can slip in the slower one and the one that sort of leaves you, the flatter trajectory one. Not the epitome of an athlete, Ramesh yeah, Power, but he's a mighty big factor when it comes to uh, providing some variation. There, are the bowling speeds. Uh, you can get it to 90, that's the quicker one that sometimes goes away from the right hander, right down to the 70s, where you've got to generate all the pace off the bat. They're taking their chances with the infield now, these singles. As long as there's no hesitation, you're probably going to get away with it. But when you play to a fielder directly and then go off for a run, you better make sure you don't hesitate. You have to just run round it as a left-hander, and that's why they uh, took him on. But you're right, it's very dangerous. He's gone straight again, and... Maybe six this time. Yes, it is. Six to end the over. It is 121 for four. Well, when he lobs it up, they're going to take him on. He'll have to readjust the field a little bit. Two strong men at the crease with big bats. 
happy to go straight. Maybe Long On has to get back. So on the current rate, they should reach 263. They'd be exceedingly happy with that, but they're four down, so a lot can change with the wicket falling now. But this is the last ball of the previous over. That was a terrific hit. Yeah, four in the old money, six in the new. This, this is decimal. And the old was pound shillings and pence. That's it, it landed on the rope. So that was a big over for Australia after a while that the Indians had them shackled. That should reduce some of the pressure. And there's a little pressure coming on now for the uh, Indian captain who's behind the stumps. You just have to start thinking a little bit more about the field placing. One or two big overs like that, and then suddenly the uh, the whole match is turned on its head, and the pressure goes the other way. And suddenly, Dhoni needs to start thinking about who bowls with in tandem with who, and what sort of field. Not only what, what field you have, but what field as you have in what position. That's going to be vital too, because this is going to go down to the wire. A bad over here, or a misfield there, or a misrun out here, is uh, something that just turns the game around. Well, he's come up to the stumps. Ow! I wonder why that is. Maybe there is... Sometimes they sort of plan a leg stumpish delivery, hoping to try and get an... to try and get a... stumping round the legs. But there was, there was no real intent shown by the batsman to go down the wicket to Irfan Patan, and yet Dhoni's come up. He might have just been batting out of his crease once he changed the length for a baton. Let him bring him, draw him back into the crease so he can pitch it up for that little bit of in-swing. Look for the LBW. I suppose the other thing is if it hits on the pads or it's just nudged on either side, he can try and prevent the run when he's standing up. But it's always something that uh, you, it's, it's two-edged, isn't it? Because it's very, almost impossible if there is a thin edge for a, a wicketkeeper to catch it standing up. It's always going to go for four. So you've got to gamble a little bit. So he's got him back in his crease. So the time can perhaps bowl a little fuller than he would normally do if they stood out of the crease and created a different length to try and get it to swing a little. Well, that's played late, fine, and gets the desired result. Very well executed. Good shot. Very good shot. Too short. Knows there's no slip, so uh, it's not very dangerous because even if it comes off the top edge, it's going to go for runs. Played so late, almost out of the wicketkeeper's gloves. You said the uh, 10 overs previous to the last two was a good period of play for India. Suddenly, it's just changed a little bit. The last few overs have been all Aussie. It's 126 for four. Well, the Aussies have pulled things back. Two of them are well set now. Uh, they're hoping to turn the pressure back on the Indians. This partnership building, 36 of 46. So they're well in control now. Harbhajan Singh missing out on this one. Ramesh Pawar ahead of him in this one so it's 126 for four 39 for clark he's looking dangerous hadn't also well settled at 19. time for a change in commentary there's ramiz raja and with him is greg blewett thank you arun action is on his last over was an expensive one that is uh, such a good bowler to watch. He flights the ball in one-day cricket, which has become a bit of a rarity. Down the track once again, and uh, quickly getting to the pitch of the ball. Ruby. 
is so vital to Australia. Michael Clark, set batsman. Australia been uh, hurt quite badly with all those uh, follow wickets. And credit to India for uh, thinking wickets. Hadn't been come back for the second. You've seen a lot of quick changes from uh, MS Dhoni. I think uh, that seems to be the latest fashion in uh, one day cricket. I think uh, teams were pretty successful uh, in the 2020 cricket when they rotated their options quickly. Seems to be uh, helping MS Dhoni here also. Short bursts allowed uh, fast bowlers to be fresh and also uh, the picked up wickets. Good voice today, a lot of noise. See themselves on the big screen. That's his variation power up. Bowls one almost across the seam. That's his quicker one. And he bowls his normal off spinner, which is a lot slower. An attacking off spinner. Pick up single of the last ball, 25 ball, 130 for four. employed the big three will be under a bit of stress here there is uh, Dravid and Ganguly and uh, Sachin James Hopes Bradley Hogg and after Bradley Hogg we've got Brett Lee and Stuart Clark The younger brigade of uh, India will uh, keep Sachin, Dravid and Ganguly on their toes. There's always uh, already a debate happening in India whether uh, these three are required in 50 over game or not. So even though they've got uh, a fantastic track record but uh, it's the performance on the day and how will they perform? They have not really played any... any uh, international cricket for a good 20 30 days at least oh, well it's a direct hit ms dhoni uh, looks pretty keen but the umpire is not interested rp singh was the fielder down at third man hadn't coming back for the second moved around well to his right Bit of a roll and then a quick release. I think this is a direct hit. Maybe not, but I think it's safe to say Brad Haddon got home reasonably safely. But the Indians a lot better in the field these days. Coming back to such and the big three, in fact. Uh, and we all know that if you haven't played uh, quality cricket, it can be difficult, even if you're a star cricketer, to come in and uh, force the Australians on their back foot. It's not going to be easy for these fellows. Dinesh Karthik not playing today. Othapa is the other uh, omission from that 2020 winning squad. Patan bowling well. Not giving the bowlers a lot of Width outside off stump, as we see, reasonable length, but more importantly, a good line. Only a couple of deliveries outside the leg stump, but generally, most of the ball's pitching in line with the stumps, not allowing the, the right hand batsmen to free their arms. Oh, yeah. 
In fact, he's improved a great deal as a bowler. I think he's become a lot more complete bowler, Irfan Pachan, because earlier in his career, he was uh, willing to operate just with the new ball. That is the impression at least we were getting. But now he's been given a job description, which is to come in the middle phase of the innings. And uh, he's shown his talent by uh, slowing down his pace. We've seen a good bit of variations creeping in his overall game plan, which seems to be benefiting uh, India. Single taken. 26 gone, 133 for four. Current rate 258. Six and over 278, and we know that Australians can get there because uh, they play intelligent cricket. And so far, uh, these two have been very intelligent against Ramesh Pawar. Didn't pick up the slow delivery, Andrew Simons. Yeah, Andrew Simons didn't look that impressed with the decision. Sweep shot. I thought it was going to beat that man at 45. Another single. Gandhi had the fielder on that occasion. Another young, talented player, left hander at the top of the order. given as a wide so probably that ball kissing uh, the pad or part of the body look at that flight he's a real old-fashioned spinner isn't he Ramiz he's got a punch in the back by the elderly Barry Richards behind me but he saying to the batsman if you're good enough to try and run down the wicket and hit me over the top good luck to you but i'm going to back myself to beat you in flight and spin oh, yeah. and that's his variation a little one a little bit quicker all good spinners have got variations but i think in modern cricket the spinners are generally a lot quicker through the air but power really slows it up and makes the batsman generate the own pace on the ball Yes, uh, he may struggle at the uh, end of the innings or near the end of the innings with this kind of strategy, but in the middle part of the innings, he can pick a wickets with this uh, with this lovely flight. Ganguly with that fumble, 50 partnership is raised. He is not feeling too happy. 140 for four. Michael Clark and Brad Haddon. 45 and 27, good partnership. Two look-alikes, aren't they? They they look the same and they they bat the same as well. They grew up together playing junior cricket. Both play for New South Wales. Very similar mannerisms. There's Ganguly. Limping off with that hamstring injury. So that might put his place at the top of the order in jeopardy. If he's off the field for, I think it's more than half an hour. He can't bat higher than six, I think, Ramiz. You might know a little bit more about that. But disappointing start to the series. So if Ganguly wasn't in South Africa for the 2020, would have been looking forward to a good series against Australia. And it's like he's twinged the hamstring. He's made few uh, alterations in his bowling action. He really used to wind up, and uh, as a result, he was getting the the swing on the ball, but the pace was missing. I think uh, with his altered action, now he's uh, just a little bit more upright, not as side on as he was uh, early on. He's getting the ball to go through quickly. He worked hard at the uh, MRF Cricket Academy. 
having a chat with him the other day and he said that uh, more adjustments have been made uh, by him in the mind than in the bowling action but he's still running in quite nicely but uh, this is where uh, he's made that uh, alteration he really used to go behind his uh, his ear almost behind his shoulder and losing a bit of bite and uh, now he's uh, made that alteration and he's looked pretty solid Lights are on and in the sport production for PCCI. This is turning out to be a, a, a very intense cricket game here. Run rate uh, once again over five. At one stage it was over six, so India pulling back and now it's uh, Australia's turn to uh, pressurize the Indians. Karthi gets uh, a lot of applause from the audience. He's a good utility cricketer, Dinesh Karthi. Never easy when you've uh, been a keeper all your life to field and uh, change your format. But uh, he's been pretty decent in the field. One forty-five for four. Australia so far losing early wickets out of Gilchrist and Hodge. Hodge would have been disappointed. He got his chance because Ponting's out for this game with a hamstring. So he got his chance at number three. Didn't capitalise on that. LBW to Sri South. Andrew Simons went for seven. Matthew Hayden, 34. Two not out batsmen, Clark and Haddon. 15 extras in that total. Certainly a little on the higher side. Zahir Khan was impressive, one for 27. Sri Sant once again, uh, major destroyer, three for 36. Irfan Patan also doing a, a fairly decent job. These two have uh, run really well between wickets. 24 singles, just four boundaries in that partnership of 55. Bit of uh, quite enjoyed the pace of that partnership. We've given respect to the situation. So it's started to slowly build up now. Yuvraj Singh is uh, coming on to bowl. Slow left arm spinner. Forty-nine wickets. One more to get to fifty. Singh, he's on the receiving end of some hefty batting too in England. Mascarenas hitting for five sixes. Final over, final over at the oval. Sri Sant had to do a bit of work. Is now adjusting him at long off Yuvraj Singh. Oh! Very popular cricketer Yuvraj Singh, especially after South Africa. Looked like he was enjoying himself on top of that bus going through Mumbai. People everywhere, and he was doing a little jig. Michael Clark uh, is such a joy to watch when he's playing against the spinners. Comes down the track, unruffled approach. And that's gone straight. No chance for Sri San. That was hit uh, very hard by Haddon. 
Yeah, Brad Haddon's very good striker of the ball. Playing today as a specialist batsman. Only a wicketkeeper batsman, but moved his feet, got to the pitch of the ball and hit it with enormous power. And well placed as well. Hit off quite wide. Australia 151 for four. Third 50 coming uh, at a good time, at a good stage. Second 50 uh, took a few extra balls. First one uh, was also at a smart pace. 56 ball, 50. Defensive corner that. That's more like it. Always looking for runs. This is where this partnership has been good. 149 Michael Clark. Tarn into his sixth over. 21. Reasonably tidy. been a massive crowd they're making a lot of noise but uh, this partnership is uh, sort of depressed them just a little this is uh, brilliant to watch unbelievable scenes uh, before the start of the game we had to really walk 15 20 minutes because uh, the traffic was jammed so many cars so many people and that's why yeah, there was a bit of a battle getting into the into the ground today people everywhere inside and outside of the ground I was out in the center before the toss and the atmosphere and the expectation today was electrifying obviously that success that they had in South Africa is really given added interest for this series you Rad Singh is pretty decent at point in fact more than decent 50 for Michael Clark crowd uh, will realize it now but what an innings under pressure once again uh, doing the job for Australia yeah, an innings played with a level head, Michael Clark. Need a partnership. Wicket's falling around him, but he's played very well. Played within himself. 68 deliveries he took for that 50. It's your Raj with a clean pickup this time. He's always on the move. Such a pivotal position, that point in one-day cricket. There's a fantastic job, Yuvraj Singh. Brad Haddon there. He's holding someone up. Something's caught his attention. And put the black sheets over the advertising boardings. So out they come. Well, he's played five balls in this over. Now he realizes that uh, maybe um, 
It's clever really to wrap up the board with the black sheet. I hope he doesn't get out now. Almost got rid of him. 155 for four. Michael Clark hit five fours in his very well made 50. Most of them off his legs. This outfield is very fast and generally just relied on timing throughout his innings. And a six down the ground. 22 singles in his 50. He worked extremely hard for those runs. 50 from 68. Five fours, 22 singles. But innings played just at the right time and a lot of stress good partnership with Haddon One fifty-five for four. Adam Gilchrist left early, but Brad Hodge for not. This partnership has uh, taken Australia to a comfortable position. Adam Gilchrist was picked up brilliantly by you rushing at point. Zayn Khan uh, got in the aftermark, and then uh, Hodge got a good one from Trisam. Wicket to wicket, a little bit of in drift. And that was enough for the umpire to adjudge it in favour of the bowler. Matthew Hayden went for the big one and was undone by a little bit of swing into him and took middle stump out. So he would have been disappointed with that. And LBW, Andrew Simons, held his bat up there just to suggest he may have got an inside edge. But the slow ball doing the job for Sri Sant. India's bowling been dominated by Shusamp, who's got three wickets. One wicket to Zaire Khan. Back live with you, Raj Singh. Dhoni taking a bit of risk here by introducing you, Raj, to this pair. Both have played spin well. Australia now moving reasonably well. These two, Haddon and Clark, these projected scores. Oh, six and over, they get 273, which I think they'll be more than happy with after their start. stuff from you Raj, just uh, mixing it up changing his pace uh, every now and then no, a bit of spin as well you Raj making the batsman think I had a quick chat to uh, Ganguly before the start of the play and we commented on the pitch and he thought that it may take a little bit of spin, which it has. And he said there might be a little bit of variation in the bounce and certainly good 
carry through to the keeper. But also the odd one, just keeping down a little bit. End of the over, 156 for four. Good over from you, Raj, get things nice and tight for India. India's bowling has been pretty impressive. Pawar, after a good start, was put away for uh, a few. But he's still got six overs left. Irfan Patan has uh, once again uh, shown the talent that he has. No wickets yet for him. R.P. Singh was uh, a little expensive. Three for Shri Sam. He just lifts the entire team, Trisan. He's aggressive, he wants to have a word with the opposition. He needs to uh, develop a bit of style though. He can be over the top at times, Trisan, with his antics. Intense character enjoys this cricket. That is so important. Very good shot. New Raj was uh, protecting the boundary at point, and so uh, quietly played by Haddon. Good thinking. He using soft hands. Yeah, just short of a length by. Patan and oh. Haddon just using soft hands to get the ball down by his feet and if both batsmen take off at the same time virtually impossible to get run out in that situation we haven't seen a lot of swing from Irfan Patan but we've seen a lot of variations and that is because his role has changed he's not operating with the new ball anymore now for India and so really to survive uh, in the middle of the innings, you need to have all those variations. You need to bowl as straight as possible. And these are not bad figures at all, going at uh, under four and over. Chase and uh, R.P. Singh couldn't do anything about it. This really is an unreasonably quick outfield. Even the half shots have carried across quickly for a four. RP Singh had no chance, no hope. He was square, and that ball was played fine. Coming down the track and making uh, his own length to that delivery from Patan. Once again, good use of the feet. Mid on just a little too deep to pr uh, protect that single. It's 163 for four. Honestly, that thing will continue. Damien Fleming and uh, Shiva Rama Krishnan in the com box. Thanks, Ramesh. Always looks like a partnership is building when you're on there. It's a good one. 73 of 95 balls. And good running between the wickets. They understand one another extremely well. Clark and Harry. Six boundaries for Clark, three for Haddon. Been outstanding the last run, trusting one another. He's gone straight down the ground, likes to use his feet. Rudra Singh is in the deep. Steve Buckner waiting for confirmation. Has it gone the distance? Boundary signaled. Good evening, Damon Fleming. Yes, good evening, Shiva. This is where Haddon loves to hit. It hits straight over the top for spinners. The quicks he prefers to, to pull the ball. But here it's good balance. There's no one straight over you, Raj's head. So that's an excellent shot. Much better this time around. Dinesh Karthik, the fielder. Used their feet extremely well, getting the elevation. And when he hit it straight, no danger with the men wide at long on and long off. 
and the lack of spin as well. He's had to hit that up on the up. He would have been in trouble if you Braj was a, a big turner of the ball. Changing field, coming over the wicket now. Sing to Haddon. Very good stuff. Very good athlete. You'd rather see. Well, he's done a pretty good job so far. 2.5 overs for 12 runs. So he's done a good job for Dhoni. Athletic in the field, plenty of energy. Running the first one hard. Brad had it. We'll pick up two. To end the over. 170 for four. So Brad Haddon and Michael Clark now put on 80 and 100 balls. So good run rate there as well. Teammates in New South Wales, close friends, good communication, this partnership so far. So this partnership's building, Shiva, and India need a wicket now. Looking at a score around 280 for the Australian team. Well, the red pillars signify the power players, the first 20 overs. Indented well, picking up four wickets. But thereafter, good recovery from Australia. No! Ritan Patan will continue. Hasn't picked up a wicket yet. Into his eighth over, none for 31. This has been one of the problems for India in the longer format, the 50 over format. Not being able to pick up wickets in the middle overs. Yeah, it's tough work. Wicket all, wicket's always build pressure. Patan's made himself more into a hit-the-deck change of pace bowler. Sri Sam got three wickets to rip through the Australian top order. Great hit. There is protection in the deep. And a desperate dive. Has he kept it in? Zahir Khan, the fielder, has given us 100%. I think it will be referred to the third umpire. First on field lumper Shastri trusting the fielder's call. So Hark, so here Khan, the big quick, throwing himself around the outfield. I think he's done a good job. I don't think his body was touching the rope as he was on the ball, so he stopped it there. Is he? Well, it's hard to tell from that angle. Another change of pace there. He's just trying to mix up the rhythm of these two batsmen. Another shot of the dive there from Zahir Khan pause from the bowler it's always good to save in even one run when you're bowling isn't it good dive from the fast bowler and he got up as well you've seen a lot of fast bowlers dive especially the Australian fast bowlers where are you going here you used to make stops like that, you? I used, to, I used to jump over him. I thought I was playing volleyball. He used to call me the bridge. A lot more athletic these days. So, Patan, yet to get a wicket. Interesting to see where his career goes in test cricket in this sort of role here. He's at his best when he's swinging the ball as well. He's in time to two well, just a single. India very much on the defensive at the moment. Just the four men inside the ring. Plenty of open spaces to pick up the ones and twos. Michael Clark just showing the maturity, particularly in the last 12 months. He found himself out of the Australian team, got back into the test team when Shane Watson was injured first test of the series versus England. Got runs in that test. And a slog there from Haddon, but he's got away with it. They're pushing hard. It's gone all the way for four. So, good over again for the Australians, 177 for four. A very good strike rate for Brad had it. It's a very effective player down the order. Often underestimated. Can get quick runs. Not coming from the meat to the bat, but he's bisected the fielders in the deep. Hayden got off to start, then threw it away. But Michael Clark and Brad Haddon have done the job. They've got to carry on. 
And the ball will be changed. After 35 overs, we are into the 35th over. It's at the commencement of the 35th over. 34 overs have been bowled. The 35th over about to commence. And they've taken a changed ball. It's a new one-day international regulations. So this after 35 overs, we're taking it at the commencement of the 35th over. It's a bit of a confusion coming to the new laws. But the front foot no ball rule being a free hit. Just having a chat with the match referee Chris Broad, he said the foot fault, even a back foot cutting the return crease, is a foot fault, no ball. So a free hit can be given to the next delivery. What's so happening? The ball's been changed. We'll wait and see what happens next over. You get another ball. Also, oh, talking about Michael Clark and maturity, I thought he was very underrated in the Australian World Cup win. Him and Nathan Bracken with the ball were the two underrated players. And he was a player when he first got in. He got a magnificent 151 here on test debut. But his game was based on flair and now he just seems to have matured backing his defense and knowing that he's got flair and attacking shots once he gets going and i think this innings shiver once again is a blueprint for the way middle order players should play in the middle order when they lose early wickets well the attitude has been good must feel a lot comfortable michael clark although the support is for the home team Plenty of support and sponsors following India after the triumph of the 2020 World Cup. And getting to Michael Clark made a Test Match 100 in his first appearance here. So the comfort factor must be pretty good. Batting out of the middle. He's such an effective player. The placement is good. He puts pressure on the field in the deep. Well, as players, you generally have grounds that, that you do better than others, don't you? And there's no doubt that uh, that man on the screen enjoys himself in Bangalore. And the partnership has been great in runs and run rate, but I've been impressed by the communication and the pressure that these two batsmen have put on the Indians in the field. Picking up quick singles, pushing ones into twos. An easy single to be had. Remember that particular test match when Michael Clark got 100. He was in the 90s, I think it was 96. Michael Clark. He was wearing a helmet against one of the faster bowlers. He removed the helmet, asked for the cap. He wanted to wear the baggy green when he reached his first test match 100. I wanted to do that as well, but I just got to 71 shift. Now that he retired, let's forget it. 48. This is Brad Haddon, Michael Clark, the man of strike. He's worked it nicely. Could be a boundary. The fine leg was inside the ring. Deft touch. And he has been in superb flow. 183 for four. the tempo of your heartbeat for 30 minutes a day you could reduce your chances of heart disease by half pick up the beat at bhf.org.uk statement for Michael Clark and Brad had it partnership of 93 in just 112 balls 15 overs remain seen a lot happen in the 2020 the 15 overs is a lot of overs plenty of bowling options Zahir Khan was the pick with the new ball Sri Shant a little wayward at times bowled a few wides but more than made up for it by picking up three wickets uh, the other bowlers RP Singh Patan Ramesh Pawan Yubraj haven't picked up a wicket at all that's been the problem that's the future cup seven match series and it's a long series Ramesh Poa pushed to sweep a point in the deep 
the dawn is inside the ring wants to Brad Haddon will just get the single that Yuvraj Singh in the 2020 World Cup there that's the future cup trophy seven matches in this series between the world champs in 2020 cricket in India and 50 over champs Australia and this is building into a fantastic tussle India won the first early 15 20 overs it's a change of pace there, and that is just a superb shot from a man in form not trying to over hit the ball hitting the gap only the class players can on drive with power like that I think Zahi Khan's blinking his eyes in disbelief about how hard a small Michael Clark can hit the ball and it was the off cutter but the length was too full it generally gets to the 130s last delivery was 120k's struck very nicely no fuss about that the calling's been good calls immediately which is one of the good things to do as a batsman when you play in India because the crowd being very loud from 49 Brad had it the sellout crowd we've enjoyed the cricket thus far so Brad Haddon 49 not out Good bowling there, just hitting a better length there, Zahir Khan, but Brad Haddon finds himself in the team. A couple of injuries, Ricky Keeper, batsman back home, a dominant player at domestic level. And worth his place as a batter alone, and that shows the flexibility of this Australian team. Plenty of support for the Indians today, been a fantastic crowd, plenty of noise, plenty of enthusiasm. 50 for Brad Haddon. What an effort this has been. Came in at a time when they were 90 for four. And it's been absolutely fantastic. Celebrations from the teammates, not so much from the crowd, which is disappointing. But it's been an innings worth watching. 100 partnership as well for these two. So second international one day 50 for Brad Haddon. High score of 70 versus the West Indies in Malaysia last year. Strike rate good, just the one six. He knows plenty of more to come. We'll pick up an easy single to end the over. 191 for four. And they're enjoying themselves out there. Sachin Tendulkar hasn't been used with the ball so far, but he's got plenty of work to do with the bat tonight. And the crowd will enjoy their hero getting out there and taking on the Australian quicks early on with the new ball. Absolutely fantastic this partnership. Coming in good time as well, good contributions. Even contributions 45 in this partnership from Clark and 50 from Haddon. I think the same hairdresser there too. Same hair colour. Good mates, these two. That's where the communications come from today. Back foot dry there. Will that go all the way? Quick outfield. Gandhi gets on the outfield. So another two there for Michael Clark. And the 100 partnership here. 41 singles. So they've worked hard running between the wickets, putting pressure on the Indian. Fieldsman, 10 fours, and just the one six as well there. Generally, when they've gone over the top, all the way for four and six. We need to bat a few more overs. Plenty of batting remaining in the low order. We like to throw their bats around. The 13 overs remain after this. Uh, fifth wicket partnership here in Bangalore. 103 of 120 balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yuvraj Singh has a chance, misses it. A direct edge should have been stranded. Michael Clark wanted the single. In the end, no direct edge, he's safe. Good contest there. That's the area where Michael Clark prowls for the Australians. Yuvraj moves well, good quick release. And with a little bit more accuracy, Michael Clark will be on his way. Again, the slow delivery. Brad Haddon's made a good 50 and he's played some excellent shots. He likes to use his feet against the spinners and he's extremely good when he hits straight down the ground. Deft touch, that was a beautiful shot playing late. It very hard, was in the air, had no chance for the fielder, even in the deep. Good elevation on that one, got the distance as well. He's got lovely wrists, hasn't he? Like when he needs to go over the top, he can really get some bat speed up, but if he gets some width outside off stumping, play the late cut. Hit something on the way through, may clip the pad. Taken by Downey, but no appeal. He's looking for the wild slog over mid-wicket. Yeah, that's a slog. He's eyed up RP Singh. Got it short. Probably just that extra bounce, which we've seen all through today, and that's hurt a little bit. Got a little bit of flesh on the hip area there. It's got to be an important spell, this one. For Rudra Pratap Singh. Just the three runs in this over so far. Aldia wide. A bit of a limp from Mahindra Singh Dhoni as he collected the last delivery. Well, there's two overs there in extras from the bowler. 11 wides, one no ball. So. Tony won't be happy with that. And there's the 50 for Brad Haddon. And he's hit them just about everywhere there. Preferring to hit pretty straight. Three boundaries straight down to the offside. Six over mid on. Generally what he's got his signal signals, it's been to the leg side. And the plate cuts as well. So he's pretty hard to contain. I mean, that's the area there on about middle stump, angling away to off. Where he can't open up the face to hit through the offside and that's the end of the over 37 overs australia 195 for four well plenty of characters here come to enjoy this game and look for an indian victory but we had some great entertainment in the australian batsman Fifty-five thousand the capacity. Maybe there are sixty thousand people in plus the cops. And should look at six and over two seventy-three two eighty will be a good score to defend on the lights. Zai Khan will continue. One for 35 for Zayed Khan. He bat very deep for Australia. Well, he's the next three batsmen for Australia. James Hopes, who's just starting his international career, gets hundreds at first-class level. Bradley Hogg, very, very effective there in the lower order, averaging 21. And Brett Lee, 18, but we know he can strike the ball long and hard. So another good quick single there between this Australian pair. So there is some hitting to come, but ideally, They'd want these two Australian batsmen to bat the next eight overs. So Hopes, Hogg and Lee, very competent late order batting. Stuart Clark, strike rate of 86. He generally hits straight and long. And Mitchell Johnson, who's not the worst hitter of the ball going around either. So there's some hitting power to come for the Australians from the big fast bowlers. He smashed that. That will remain hit. What a magnificent shot this from a Brad Haddon. 200 up. That was an absolute tracer bullet there from Brad Haddon. Just watch the wrists again. It just gets himself in a power position down below and just lets the wrist go through. Oh, 
That's awesome power and pace. Change of angle now. Kenny's charged him, hasn't timed it too well. Ramesh power the field in the deep. Gives the batsman enough time to pick up two. But the boundary, just take a look at the front leg. He gets his front leg out of the way. It just depend on the, on the flow of the bat, hitting it through the line. Great shot selection. Yep. Also, it gives him options. If Zahir Khan goes leg stump or middle, he can go over mid or mid wicket. So, by getting that front leg out of way, he really got some good options. 180 degrees. There is a big gap between the man at uh, deep square leg and long on. Looking for the Yorker. Just get the single. Dinesh Kartik in the field, not playing today in the 11. Yeah. 76 for Clark, plenty of time to get his 100. Good Yorker to end the over, single off it. It's 2 0 4 for 4. Zahir Khan just getting it right on that last ball. Got to get it right in the block hole when you're coming around the wicket to right hand batsman. And there's the scorecard so far for Australia. Gilchrist went early. Matthew Hayden on a good partnership with Michael Clark. Brad Hodge found dead in front LBW. It was Sreesham who ran through the Australians, knocked over Andrew Simons as well. And the story of the day has been Michael Clark and Brad Haddon so far. Already up to 114 runs, this partnership. And the Australian partnerships, Gilchrist and Hayden, Hodge and Hayden, over pretty quickly. But nice little partnership with Clark and Matty Hayden. But the big one's been the last one there, which is Clark and Haddon. And Sri Samp has been the pick of the bowlers, 3 for 36. It's been that inability not to pick up a wicket in the last 15, 20 overs, which has let the pressure off these two Australian batsmen. We've seen a numerologist. I don't know if you believe in numbers, David. Rudra Pratap Singh wants to call himself Rudra Singh. Straying down line. Easy pickings for well settled batsmen. You don't bowl on the pads. For Michael Clark, he gets into 77 plus 4, 81 for him, ninth boundary. So RP Singh coming over the wicket. If you pitch on leg stump, you're going to go. He's got lovely hands, Michael Clark. Just gets the timing right, placement right. Four runs all the way on this quick outfield. Pressure's on the fielder. Always running the first one hard. So RP Singh bowling to Michael Clark. You just see the blue ones there, particularly the, the furthest up. Both went for four. And the ones that didn't get scored off that grey area generally been around middle stump, around that six, seven yard mark. Just can't afford to get anywhere near middle or leg stump to Michael Clark. So he's decided to cramp them for room. Going around the stump. Inside edge will result in yet another boundary. It's turning out to be an expensive over. Nine runs already at the first three balls. For a moment there, an RP Singh would have seen that hitting the stumps. And the French cut. It's been used nicely by Brad Hatton for four runs. Oh, that's close. Leg stump. Could have easily gone back there. So nine runs off three balls. Real pressure on RP Singh here. Will he bowl the Yorker? Can he change his pace with an off cutter?
with the crowd thinking it was a catch. Bump ball. Should be in for a treat if the run chase is good later in the evening. Oh, definitely so. A massive crowd. A lot of noise. A lot of flags. Enthusiastic yelling. And there's plenty of stars on the Indian team in that batting lineup. Also get to see Brett Lee unleash himself. And they're pushing for two. Good running. It's been a feature of this partnership between the two New South Welshmen. With Sachin Tendulkar in the deep, giving away a couple of runs. It's a bit uneven, the outfield. And look at that, he's running the first from hard and put pressure on the field on the deep. Excellent running between the wickets. That's been one of the hallmarks of this partnership. Oh. 215 for four. So still plenty of support here for the Indians. A couple of wickets would stir this crowd up. So far the Australians have the answers. 11 overs to go, 300 is still a chance. So, plenty of fans. We certainly will look at uh, 281, that's for sure. 11 overs remain. A few big hits, 300 is a possibility, especially if these two carry on till the very end. It's going to be a fascinating cricket under lights. There will be something in it for the faster bowlers. The likes of Lee, Stuart Clark, and India have a strong batting lineup. Yudra Singh from the far end. It's going to be quite interesting because both Haddon and Clark like to use their feet against the spinners. Nice fight there from Yuvraj Singh. He's a tall man. If he can get a little bit of turn, that's oh. where the worry was. And then he darts one in. So good change of pace. It's about keeping these two batsmen getting because they're guessing they're well set. The running between the wickets has been fantastic. Nice soft hands, open up the face. Easy symbol. The good pace the last delivery, 103 kilometers now. Something very similar to Anil Kumble. Change of angle again for the right-hander. Left arm over. Intelligent cricket. Realised the short third man was a little square. Will pick up two runs. Good batting from Haddon as well there. He just moved around the crease a little bit. And that just puts a bit of doubt in the bowler's mind. What is he going to do? The conventional sweep will just get the single. I think the reverse sweep will come out, do you think? He's more a traditional player. Brad Haddon and he'll feel like the sweep shot will start to come out he's got a lot of power for a small man I still think he might want to run down and hit over the top let's quietly move on to 84 now Michael Clark be delighted if he can get another 100 year this time in the one day format strike rate excellent an important one too, there was wickets falling all around him. So, nothing off the last ball. After 40 overs, Australia 220 for four. Came together at 90 for four, these two. Clark is batting on 84, had it on 66. It's been a good pitch to bat on. Early loss of wickets, couple of them. 18 for two at one stage, and then a little bit of partnership, 90 for four after that. Well, after the power plays, the red pillars signify the power plays. When India managed to pick up four wickets, they were looking good at 90 for four, but now Australia in firm control, 220 for four. 10 overs remaining. 
Ramesh Pawar into the attack. Want to take you through the next half. It's going to be Ramiz Raja and Arun Dal. Thanks, Shiva. Australia have really gotten control of this game now. Full toss, and that's been hiked over the mid-wicket for six. That's beautifully done. He's a bit of a risky choice. Pawar being asked to come uh, in the dying stage of the innings when the charge is on. Would be just a touch risky and expensive for India. Yes, indeed. Now he's going to be forced to try and hit the block hole on certain occasions. He started with conceding a six, so that's extra pressure. And certainly now the Indians are intimidated by this partnership. Magnificent work, 137 of 144. I'd like to remind viewers it was 90 for four at one stage. Australia were under a lot of pressure then. Hats off to these two. Time to reap benefits of that uh, wonderful partnership and stay at the crease. They were very good against Pawar in his first burst. Both play spin really well and now uh, maybe put away in his last stint. So that's what he's endeavouring to do. He's trying to hit the, the length which the batsman can't get under. But they've got a six to begin the over. So that's Srishant, Tendulkar, all now pressurised. That's well played. He's going to push for two. They're very quick between the wickets, but they'll settle for one. That's been another feature of their batting. It's been the combination and the singles that they've run. Pushed for twos as well. Again, the full toss, just the single. 11 from the over. It's 2, 31 for four. He'd be pretty unhappy and missing out on that juicy full toss. This is a wonderful partnership. A comeback partnership after Sri Sant had dented Australia quite badly with uh, three bodily harms. Three for 36. Well, that's surprising. Three for 36 of eight. Srishant could have been used to dislodge this pair, but it wasn't. One more over to be completed for the fifth. Oh! Option. Yuvraj has done a fair job. He's into his fifth. He's conceded only 19. But the most essential part being that wickets column is still blank. That's what they've done so well. They've taken singles, never allowed pressure to come on them, and then really put the bad balls away as well. That's why they're the world champions at this level, at this format. Because uh, there's a lot of self-belief. They're never out of it. They counter any aggressive situation. Many of their uh, normal uh, one day cricketers are missing because of injury so this is a terrific effort from uh, the stand-in men especially by uh, Haddon well it's all about wickets whichever format of the game you're playing if you allow an opportunity for the opposition to get a partnership then you've got to bear with the consequences and at the moment the Australians are completely in control So at the current rate, they reach about 280, and they certainly would now be eyeing the 300 mark. Has he got his man? He's been given. So that is the breakthrough that the Indians so wanted. It's been provided by Yuvraj Singh, and it's also his 50th wicket in ODIs. Good stumping from uh, MS Dhoni looked extremely confident and in control when he was dislodging the bales. There you see, 
quickly got rid of the bales. Hadn was uh, very late in getting back into the crease, but uh, played well for his 69, 234 for five. New man in is James Hopes, who I'm told sometimes even opens the batting for Queensland. He's the all-rounder. So a successful over by Yuvraj. It's 234 for five. That wicket coming just at the right time for India. They needed to uh, pull it off in uh, the last part of the innings. Hedden uh, lost his cool. Came down the track and uh, was beautifully done by MS Dhoni. Neat bit of stumping. His 95 on strike, Michael Clark. What a magnificent 100 this would be. 95 of 107. At just the right time. Tomar with the ball. Again a full toss and that's been hammered over the field of a six. That is 100. 100 Michael Clark. What a way to get it. Took on that fielder. It's his third ODI 100 and in a perfect setting. A remarkable innings under pressure a full house and, uh, really had to produce uh, the goods for in for Australia because uh, they had lost four wickets lost uh, a bit of uh, the punch and he's provided them with that punch now with that hundred <laughs> lots of pressure on Ramesh Pawar he's really losing it Full tosses that have been put over mid-wicket. This is another one. It was always going to be difficult, really, for Pawar to come in and bowl those uh, quicker deliveries because uh, he's working against his nature. He normally uh, likes to flight the ball in the air. Catch it! More like that. Oh, uh, athletic <laughs> bit of stuff from uh, Pawar. Would have been a very good catch. Well, he almost reached it. He's not a tall man, but that was, uh, yes, uh, the effort, A for effort, but didn't quite make it, but well bowled. These overs are extremely important. You've got a wicket. This is an opportunity to pull things back to about 270, 280. The strict Australia now. Again, a full toss. Has he got enough bet on it? Yes, he has. Another six. Ramesh Pawar has totally lost it. We told you it was always going to be risky. And MS Dhoni will it not be too happy with his uh, bowling change. Pawar uh, not been able to uh, bowl his usual flighted stuff. The pressure of the situation asking him to go flat and his ball quite loosely in this uh, last hit. He's gone over the top, didn't quite get it from the meat of the blade. That's kept inside with credit. Two runs that result, 16 runs from the over, 250 for five. Yes. Yuvraj carrying on. So they're using their spinners in preference to the faster bowlers. Ramesh Pawar certainly didn't pay off in this situation. Yes. He's going to get one. Hopes he's got off strike. He's given the opportunity to Michael Clark. That's a good thing to do. Pressure on the Indians. Seven overs to go. 250 already on the board. They just need wickets. They get another couple now, then only they can stop the Australians. Short, and he's pulled that. But he's found the fielder. He'll have to be content with just one. He's very good with that shot. Every time the ball has been uh, pitched on the shorter side or a full toss has been picked up by uh, Michael Clark. 
He's belted it hard over mid-wicket. Shorty piece of fielding from Srishant. Allows batsman uh, three runs in. Portley has got uh, Michael Clark back on strike. Well, not a lot going right for the Indians. The single was on. That's all he needs. On top of the ball, on top of the bounce of the ball. Finding the gap. They'll be disappointed with that one. Room and length. Perfect for the drive. That's better. You've just got to keep it on the stumps. A single now is akin to a dot ball. That's the length that he would want. Just a hint of away movement. Normally at this stage of the game, you'd want it sort of coming in and restricting any room at all. But 300 is probably what they'd be targeting, even though they've lost Haddon. But Michael Clark is there, and he's the danger man. That's well bowled as well. That'll be just one. What an innings from uh, Michael Clark. The fact that he is there now, uh, almost till the end, is helping uh, hopes because, uh, as earlier mentioned, he was struggling against the spin, but because uh, his partner has been so severe against the spinners, it has allowed a bit of a breather for hopes. And as a result, Australians uh, are thriving as a result of this bowling change. Back in business, the Aussies. A slow ball, and he's played it magnificently. That'll be four. 11 from the over. 267 for five. The highest stakes. For their scoring rate is in front of you. It's the, the field restriction over is where the wickets had fallen, is where India had control. And after that, that partnership has just taken it away and is getting bigger and bigger, much to the dismay of Indian supporters. Full toss, that's been turned away, but straight to the fielder. He'd be a little disappointed with that. Got himself into just the perfect position to flick it over. Fine leg in the circle. He's timed the ball beautifully, Michael Clark. Full pitch delivery being put away with a lot of ease and off the middle of the stick. A couple of feet on the right or left of the fielder, that ball would have gone across to the boundary in a jiffy. Bit of a collision with RP Singh. It's okay. Smiles all around. But it did inhibit him from getting or having any thoughts of entertaining a second. Oh gosh. They're both going the same way. Two more to the total. He's doing it very well, Michael Clark. He's not really throwing caution to the winds. He knows that he wants to be there till the 50th. That's what will ensure that Australia reach 300. And it's a Nimbus Sport production for the BCCI. That's the view of the Australian dressing room. Relief all around, smiles all around at one stage. Very serious. Made room for himself, got into a good position. Didn't quite connect. Ricky Ponting not playing today, but uh, hopefully he'll be available for selection in the next one. Their track record without him is not great. 42% as compared to 72% when he's the captain. Just told that Ricky Ponting plays off two, and that's handicap in golf. I'm talking about. It's almost as good as he is with the bat. And 
But we've got one two handicapper with us. Greg Blewett is a two handicapper as well. That ends the over. A single from the last ball. It's 273 for five. This partnership looking good. 39 from 25 balls. Well, it's Australia in command. Four very long overs in prospect for the Indians. Michael Clark is in complete control. In the commentary box is Greg Blewett, and with him is Barry Richards. Swing and a miss. And there'll be a little bit of that. Australia be mighty happy with where they are now, though. And that's uh, almost entirely due to Michael Clark. He had a wonderful tour of India when he got his debut 100. There we go. He got his uh, 100 in a test match, that was. And good strike right there, too. He was just intent on giving uh, Michael Clark the uh, strike. Quite right, too. But it's been a, a wonderful test of temperament for Michael Clark. He's had a few injuries in recent times, and uh, he'll be mighty pleased with this. I think the good thing about it too, Barry, is that he had a long layoff. He had about three or four months off after the World Cup. Well-deserved break, and then he came back in South Africa for the 2020s, and I think he only batted once. Faced about five or six deliveries, and that, that's been his hit. Oh, and that's smacked as well. One bounce for Michael Clark played a superb innings here for Australia. Full toss, Sri Sant missing the block hole. And Michael Clark not easy to hit the low full tosses either, Barry. So he got good power into that. Yeah, he just cleared the left side and whooped it away. And this shows you the value of having a, a player in that goes all the way through. Not just reach your 100 and have a slog and then hit one straight up in the air. Go right to the death. There's more balls to be bowled still. Yeah, bowled, well played. Good cricket all round. But it is so valuable and uh, can India produce the same sort of thing? They've got plenty of batting in their top six, but one of them's got to go all the way through. Will it be that man, Yuvraj? There's the change of pace, 141 to 103. Very good, too. Oh, that's gone uh, <laughs> in the wrong direction. Sachin does the tidying up, but it got the desired result. A run. There's the little master. I think they might need a gem of innings from Sachin tonight. He's been in terrific form the last three or four months from Indy, coming back from injury. And there's the long delivery from Sri Sam. Delivered it next to the umpire. And there's Sachin. You know that it's a good wicket out there, and he'll be looking forward to a big innings today. Beautiful field it. I was still going to run into the over. 281 for five. And Australia, of course, got some batting to come. Brad Holt, Brett Lee, Mitchell Johnson can all hit the ball long distances. And there's Sri Sant breakdown of his 10 overs. He made his three for 55, so be pleased with his evening's work. It was a little bit erratic early, but most importantly, got three wickets. Yeah, ten overs. 
I suppose, I suppose you'll be pleased with three overs, but there were a lot of extras, and that means you've got to bowl them all over again. There's probably a couple of overs in there for Sri Santh and the rest of the bowlers in, uh, in terms of extras. An extra two overs here, when you've got a batsman like Clark in, is quite costly. Hogg, Lee, Clark and Johnson. Brad Hogg, he's been sitting with his pads on <laughs> for a while. He would have put his pads on uh, when Haddon went into back. Long partnership there. Now a little cameo between Clark and Hopes. It's been a pretty good partnership too. I wonder whether they'll send Brett Lee in ahead of Hogg. Hogg's a good player, but he's more of a, a nudger and runs hard between the wickets. That's up in the air. Could be out. Is out. It's a no ball. Above the... Uh, yeah, there it is, called by the umpire. Michael Clark was almost marching off. Indians are not happy. Dodie hands on hips. Umpire is convinced. The Australian batsman just checking with the umpire whether it's a front foot no ball or the height. And we'll get a good idea of how high this was. It's got to be over waist height, and it was. And that's a good decision. So it's not a free hit. Oh, he's treated it like it is one, and it's going to lob between two fielders. It's on for young and old. Yeah, this is uh, going to be a few 20-20 shots, James hopes. He goes to 20. It's a 50 partnership between these two. In just 33 deliveries. Bear in mind... We're not through to 50, but the score after 25 overs, which will be half, was 130 for four. And that's gone down to uh, where Slip would have been. Zahir struggling too. They're all looking for the block hole and missing on the high side. Another four. It's carnage here. The crowd's gone very quiet indeed. Yeah, an edge and it flies away. Just too full. That's most waist height as well so just not quite getting it right the Indian bowlers towards the end so hopes doing a great job coming into the Australian side 24 not out of just 16 deliveries and I'm wondering whether I'll send Brett Lee in next he's a big hitter oh, these two might see them through they're going to take him on, no. I can't believe he got a good round of applause. It's not, like, it's not very well liked, is he? Sachin Tendorkit? No, only joking, he's absolutely adored. All around the world, really. Such a great player, and especially home here in India. That I think it'll be just a single to the umpire. Oh, well spotted because it was a little faint one. Don't know whether Khan is injured here. He's just watched him last delivery running in and he was just really ambling to the crease. So I don't know whether he's just a little bit fatigued. He just looks like he's. Just struggling a bit Get in there, just ambling it. Smacked away, just the one, not really timed. Well, when they look back on this, India, they'll review it with a, a little bit of a problem. First 17 overs, it was 91 for four. They weren't able to ram that four wicket uh, in the first 17 overs home as an advantage because the next 17, Australia scored 104 runs and didn't lose a wicket. And that's where they'll have to look at it between overs. Oh, beautifully done. Just pinch the strike. Over 17 and 34, they've done well. 293 for five. Michael Clark. The other good thing, too, about Michael Clark, he's gone right to the end of this innings, and he still looks reasonably fresh, running between the wickets very hard, getting his fluids up. Every now and then, the 12th man running out the drinks. Would have done a lot of fitness work when he had his break. 
So Australia looking at over 300. Well, that's an unlikely score. You know, an 91 for four. But uh, as Australia do on so many occasions, they're a world-class side. And they've got themselves right back into this game. Maybe to just take the single. Real positive for Australia. Win or lose this match as they're batting. The fact that Ponting and Mike Hussey, who are two of their best one-day batsmen, aren't playing tonight. So I think that's very encouraging that a few of the backup players have come in and done their jobs very well. And that's put away nicely. It's going to be a tester. Just a couple. And quite right. And you, uh, you add Watson to that equation. Three of their, their major players out of the equation. It, it really has been a fine effort. Michael Clark has taken it upon himself. And just wonder what this does to the psyche of the Indian players. They would have been right on top of the world. The crowd was with them and they were 91 for four, but it's all gone a bit quiet since then. Now you've got to go and lift yourself before you go out to bat. Again, swatted away. Just the one. Or will it be? Yes, just the one. Well fielded. I think they'll be disappointed that they've gone for so many runs, but they'll know that they've got a very good batting lineup with three big guns back into the 50 over side. And there's the breakdown of the wickets 14, 18, and 78. And then at 90 for four, when Simons went, they were in trouble, but then a big partnership between Clark and Haddon. A bold, ideal delivery at the end of uh, the one day innings. Just a slight difference between uh, the 20 over game where it's just complete natural ability and then you get a little bit of the 50 over game. It's more about tactics, working your way out of situations, just thinking your way through situations. You've just got that little bit more time and, and Australia have come up trumps here. Seemed an unlikely score. Michael Clark, strike rate of 100. I think he likes it here at Bangalore. 150 on debut in Test match cricket. And now 100 in ODIs. I'm sure this is one of his favourite grounds now in the world for Michael Clark. One to go, 299 for five. Just one to go. And that's put away. Just on the bounce. They're going to go for two. Going to have to hurry. I think he's there. Great stuff from Michael Clark. Coming back for two. He's 129 not out and he's still sprinting towards the end. Just look at him between the wickets here. Michael Clark turns and runs hard and makes it easy. Good fitness and stamina. 129 off 130 deliveries. What an innings. And again, swatted away. Just on the bounce. Beautifully struck. Giving himself room. And it's worked for James Hopes. And this is a little cameo from him as well. And there it is. The highest six-wicket partnership at Bangalore. Giving himself a little bit of room, slicing it over backward point. 
So he'd be very pleased with his contribution as well to this Australian total, James Hopes. Bold. Just the one. I think they're a little stunned, to be honest. 90 for four. And now it's 306. All is not lost, of course, because of the, the uh, quality of batsmen in the Indian side. It, but they'll have to play well. Be a test for uh, a few of the bowlers. Mitchell Johnson, Tate. That'll be on the bounce, too. I need a one. I think the conditions are actually going to favour the Australians because it has become very overcast and then bowling under lights. I've got a feeling it might swing around a bit. The crowd will know that India are in massive chance of chasing down this total. Be interested in watching their stars go about it. Oh, that's uh, out. Just inside the boundary, neatly judged by Sachin Tendulkar. He said it swung just a little bit, so that little cameo comes to an end for James Hopes. Just one ball left. Brad Hogg will come to the crease, or uh, somebody will come to the crease, but they won't face a ball. Well, James Hopes going for the maximum, as you should at this stage of the innings. And all he could do was hole out to Sachin Tendulkar, who took a very comfortable catch at long on. So James Hopes, a very handy innings, 37 off just 25 balls faced. And the score now, 307 for six. Clark is actually in the end run out for 130. He's hit it straight back to Zaya Khan. He's run him out, but what a great knock. Australia 307 for seven and their 50 overs. It's going to be a terrific run chase from India. They'll have to play well. But Michael Clark, man of the moment, he's done a fantastic job for Australia. Yeah, fantastic innings from Michael Clark. Bit of a smile there. He'll raise his bat, salute the crowd, 130 off 132 balls faced, run out off the last delivery. He won't be too disappointed about that. He'll be extremely happy with what he's done and what he's achieved tonight. Well played, Michael Clark. Yeah, you'd have thought, uh, I think if one of the Indian batsmen had walked off playing in innings like that, there would have been a standing ovation, but I think the crowd a little stunned. They were 90 for four, Australia. And then Michael Clark and Brad Haddon between them uh, have turned this game around and given India a real target to chase. Hopefully the clouds will blow away and we'll get a full 50 over competition. 308 to win. Let's get out to India. He's surprised as well, Dr. Gambir. Yeah, he wanted that one, Paul. Cool. So here Khan started the Indian bowling off earlier today with a wide. But Brett Lee's had a good warm up out with the off field staff. Straight into 140 Ks. We know he can get up to 160. And it's a good night for it. Let himself go. We'll be looking to swing the ball into Gambia. He's looking at the corridor around the off stump, outside the off stump. You know, Gambir likes to feel for the delivery away from the body. It does score a lot of runs through the offside, Gautam Gambir. Yeah, he's beautiful through that point region where you can draw him up. He's by bowling straight and full, get a little bit of swing. Might be a little bit hard while this rains around for Brett Lee. But to get full, they might get a little bit of seam off the pitch. Two slips in play. Doesn't carry to the wicketkeeper. 
So the bounce was quite consistent when India bowled in the afternoon. Good decent speed, the last delivery, 147 Ks. It doesn't carry. And a little bit of rain as well. Ball will get wet. A lot harder to control. Also counts out a bit of swing. And then if the seam starts to get wet, really hard to control, you get less bounce. So it might work in India's favour with a wet ball. There's the ground staff. Pretty relaxed at the moment. Great delivery this time. Almost falling for it, Gautam Gambhir. It's certainly going to be difficult, like you mentioned the point, that the ball might get a little soggy. Difficult to grip. And he's decided to hit the deck, and he's rewarded by extra ba bounce. Pace is good, 147. And that's where you've got to be flexible as a fast bowler. I'd say Brett Lee, while he's watching the Aussies bat, would have been hoping in these... Once the lights are on, that the ball might swing around a little bit, but with the rain, you might not be able to, so he's got to bring his length back and hit the deck hard. Great delivery. What a start this has been for Brett Lee. India needed a good start, but Brett Lee's had a good one. Up to 149. Spoke to Brett Lee in the warm-up. He says the ankle's fine. He can let himself go. No longer with his great bowling partner, Glenn McGrath, who's retired. And look at that. Adam Gilchrist taking around head height, hitting the gloves hard. Hurts a little bit for Gilly, but it's a good sight. Starts off with a made and over. None for none. Bradley has been very popular in India. Fantastic athlete. He's been a great performer for Australia. Unfortunately, missed out in the World Cup because of that injury. A very strong batting lineup. Ganguly might have to bat lower down because he was off the field. You've run seen in good form. Rahul Dravid, Dhoni, Patan, the last four, but the bowlers, so they expect batting till Patan. Mitchell Johnson, the left arm seamer, will start from the Bimmel end. He's very impressive against India, 4 for 11, his best against India in Malaysia last year. Tendulkar strike. You can hear the crowd waiting in anticipation. Yeah, it seems quite popular. Maybe Sachin. He's been in good form. 2007. Been caught in the 90s a couple of times. Shiver three times in one day internationals and once in tests. Just needs to get over that barrier. But if he gets a 90 tonight, I think the India are well on the way to chasing down this 308 to win. Well, a couple of 90s against South Africa in Ireland. And then uh, the other couple of 90s were against England. And he got them in quick time. But Mr. Johnson in the 2020 World Cup, good impressive wicket-taking ability there. The six matches, economy well accepted, just over six runs and over. And strike rate, 18 balls per wicket. He'd be happy to do that in 50 over cricket, let alone test cricket. And that's a beautiful delivery, hinting it's shaping into Tendulka, hitting the seam and going away. That's an absolute cracker to the, the little master. And he might be just blaming it on the grip. Probably going to hit that for four. He'd definitely forget this one. The feet started to move after the ball passed the bat. It's the natural angle that the left arm seamer possesses, bowling from over the stumps. That would give him a lot of confidence. There's the blueprint where... Mitchell Johnson will want to get a huge percentage of balls there, right in the corridor of uncertainty, outside off stump. This one has come back just a little bit. 
and 145 Ks. When Mitchell Johnson was first unearthed as a teenager, there was talk of him being, you know, a 100 mile an hour fast bowler. Just since he's had a lot of injuries and getting into the Australian team, he's been more in the mid to high 130s. We just saw in the 2020 and already tonight, he's getting himself in the mid 140s. So that's starting to get near genuine pace. As we see a field change, Brad Hogg's gone from square leg to a deep point, backward point. So obviously Gil Chris is happy with the control from Johnson, angling away from Tendulkar. There's Adam Voges on for Michael Clark. Johnson speeds, that's excellent, your first over. And encouraging for Australian cricket and himself. Into the mid-140s, the umpires having a chat to the batsmen, but they're going to stay out there at this stage. 11 dot deliveries at the start of the innings. Tendulkar taking his time, the rain's getting heavier. Be a wide first one on the board for India. So they're off the mark with an extra. It was a problem for the Indian fast bowlers. Mitchell Johnson just not quite getting it right there. Looked like he's trying a short pitch ball. Didn't get the line in that middle stump. Big up in, did a pitch in line, up goes the finger, and Mitchell Johnson has picked up a huge wicket here. Tendulkar departs for no score. Well, he was threatening to swing, and that one was full, and it just shaped in nicely to Sachin Tendulkar. Definitely wasn't going over. Mitchell Johnson absolutely pumped, and I still know that Tendulkar's the big wicket. So, swinging nicely, pitching on off stump and that's hitting middle stump halfway up good decision so the little masters on his way excellent ball there from Johnson and why wouldn't he be pumped up first wicket for the Australians Sachin Tendulkar on his way for a duck India one for one When is a good deal not a good deal on car insurance? When I'm not rewarded for my careful driving, just because I've been on Mum's policy. At Direct Line, all name drivers can build up a no claims discount to use when they need a policy of their own. And as well as great prices, when you insure more than one car at your address, we'll give you an extra 10% discount. That's better. Visit directline.com or call 0845 246 8776. Direct Line, a good deal better. Everybody wants perfect vision. Who wouldn't? No glasses, no contact lenses. I saw a difference immediately, and after a few hours, my sight was brilliant. In the air, just on top of Brad Hogg. We get to the boundary, it's a quick outfield. But just for a moment, Malcolm Gandhian would have had his heart in his mouth. It's risky but it's where he does like to hit the ball square of the wicket on the offside. So first boundary for India. Gets enough height on it. And the outfit has been quick all day. Minimal footwork, but a beautiful time of the ball. Well, again, the very rebounds might result in yet another boundary. Buy signal this time, but runs on what India need. Doesn't matter how they come, as long as they keep coming. Well, consecutive fours here. Also, it's getting the ball wet, running along the outfield. All the way from four, Gilchrist getting half volley there. Two umpires having a chat. Does seem to have got a little bit heavier in the last few minutes. Will decide to carry on. In fact, even Sachin Tendulkar, before he got out, was just having a word with Suresh through the umpire. He then said to him, let's carry on. Oh, 
the reaction after he was out, LBW, Sachin Tendulkar was looking up at the skies, looking at the rain. That plumb in front, it's the late swing that deceived Tendulkar, he's playing down the wrong line. Doesn't get much easier for an umpire, great delivery. And we're seeing a bit of this, aren't we? That's an RP Singh type delivery, Zahir Khan. The left hand is really worry right-hand batsman when they can swing the ball in late like that and it's the extra pace of Johnson as well elation for the Australians again the umpires will have a chat it's definitely become worse it's gotten heavier what are they going to do the ground staff should be well prepared to cover the pitch in time Looking at it once again, not too sure. They decide now. They last the pitch to be covered. Play will be suspended. A heavy drizzle here in Bangalore at the Chinnaswamy Stadium. The early setback has already been achieved by Australia. They dismissed Tendulkar. Great delivery from Mitchell Johnson. Gautam Gambhir has got a boundary, but not very convincing. Wonder how long it's going to rain. The weather report did say expecting rains a little later in the evening. It's been Australia all the way today. They come back very strongly. Six of the players not playing from the last one day international that played the World Cup. They've done extremely well winning the toss, deciding to bat first. They must have been very happy with the total. 90 for four, they're struggling at one stage, Australia. Oh, it was against the odds, wasn't it? Michael Clark just showing his ever growing maturity, batting with one of his best mates, Brad Haddon, getting his opportunity through injuries, and he took it. And they not only built a big partnership, they took a momentum away from the Indian bowlers. And you just sense the Indians were just waiting for something to happen. And it didn't. James Hope's come in and played a nice cameo as well. So 